So we have about 45 minutes left together, and we want to take advantage of that time since we are now the uh, experts in the world <laughs> on this topic, uh, and really dig in to that question of what we should do next and um, use this audience wealth of information, experience over the last couple of days to see if we can surface what some of the key strategic moves for either libraries in general or for your institution um, based on where we are now. So as a warm up to that discussion, we won't ask you to say right this minute what, what are those strategies. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, the conversation that we started yesterday and ask you to, again, form small clusters um, at your tables of no more than five people, if it's possible that at this point there are still people that you don't know. Uh, maybe try and find them. Uh, we invite you to do that. You can certainly move around as you'd like or you know, congregate on the sides or whatever, whatever works. Uh, and, and first, think about what your personal summary is of the last day or so. And they, maybe you had some dinner conversations last night. And uh, if you'd like, add to uh, your thoughts yesterday about uh, you know, things that you've learned or what the implications are for your institution. So we'll again take 10 minutes to give everyone a chance uh, to share with one another in smaller groups. Um, what their ideas are on this first question. And we'll use that as a lead-in to the second piece, getting to those strategic actions. So it'll take 10 minutes. Before we move into our, uh, our rapid-paced strategic planning session on what we should do next, uh, does anyone want to share uh, just a quick highlight um, from the conversations we've just had about what we've com accomplished so far over the last day? Quick. Quick highlights. And if anyone's looking at the, at the stream online and our colleagues who are joining us, uh, feel free to add some of those as well. People are ready to plan. They want to talk about what to do. Should we move on? OK. Let's do that. So uh, this next session, or, or this next piece, we're going to take a tiny bit of a different tap. Because we want to make sure that we record the best or most popular priority ideas uh, that come up in your conversations over this next piece. Uh, so we do, thank you, Dale, um, we do want you uh, to assign a recorder in your group. And this person uh, will be responsible for identifying with you the top three ideas that come out of an initial brainstorm about what we should do next. And then we'll ask those recorders to share back uh, to the rest of the room before we end our time together. So we're going to take a little bit longer for this piece, give you, a, again, a little bit of time to sort of warm up into the conversation. Uh, and, and really, at first, just brainstorm you know, answers to this question, what do you think we should do next? And then we'll give you, uh, this time, a five-minute warning or, or signal so that then you can start to prioritize, OK, what do we think are the top three? And then we'll ask each recorder to take a, a sheet of paper from your table, write on it with a marker one strategic action per page. And we want three with the number on it, number one, and then whatever the item is. So there's an example on the next slide here. Uh, so I tried to make this up a couple days ago. What, would I, what could I imagine? Uh, if we wanted to say that we need to understand and track this trend, maybe library staff should take a MOOC. So I have an example and kind of a concept. So it can be really broad, it can be really narrow, but we want one per page and we want the top three. I know it's going to be hard, but we can do it. Okay, so 15 minutes, sign a recorder, brainstorm, and then I'll tell you when you need to start prioritizing. I think most of you have three sheets. I need to acknowledge this table over here by the column because they were the first that I saw to have all three sheets. <laughs> Congratulations. OK, so what we're going to do from here is see if we can very quickly surface what we think those key strategic actions are. 
And we'll do some you know, comparing with the stuff that's happening online as we go through uh, these next few minutes. So what I'm going to ask is for each one of the recorders to please stand up. Congratulations, yes. And what I'd like to do is have a you know, brave volunteer, maybe you, you're closest to the mic, um, share with us your number one suggested strategy. Yeah. Ours, ours actually don't go kind of number one, number two, number three. It's kind of micro, macro, mac, major macro. Is there a Luke, macro. most important one? Well, I'll go micro first. And okay. that would be engage um, at the local institution in the conversation about, about campus and on campus and online learning. In other words, get to the table and make friends and influence people. Get to the table, make friends and influencers. Those of you who have your sheets in your hands, who recorded at your tables, how many have one strategy that matches th that one? Recorders only, raise your hand. One, two-ish, three, four, five, and no, five. Okay, so can we have all of those come forward, no matter whether it was number one, two, or three, and we're gonna cluster them together on the wall. Thank you. Thank you. Any others? OK, great. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, yes. Can you come to the mic, please? Uh, you're number one. So our number one was to offer introduction to disciplinary thinking courses through MOOC. So for example, think like a sociologist that include but go beyond library research skills. OK. So could we say teach a MOOC ourselves and make it more general, or should we say specific? OK. Who had teach that MOOC, <laughs> or who had teach a MOOC as one of your key strategies? Two, OK, great. Can we bring those forward? We'll, we'll do the same thing. We'll cluster them together on the wall. OK, next. Our number one was to uh, promote advocacy with publishers to create new licensing models that would work you know, in a, in a new international form. I hear skepticism. <laughs> Okay, advocacy with publishers for new licensing models. Anyone else have that as a key strategy? Okay, we'll, we'll collect those two. Anyone else? I think there was one more hand. Was there one more? Okay, great. Thank you, Dale. You're still standing. <laughs> Our number one was not only to understand faculty's experience, but to understand the student learning experience in MOOCs. And our action item was to take, have librarians strategically take MOOCs to assess that. Anyone else have, OK, librarians taking MOOCs? Let's bring all of those forward. And if everything has been captured, you, you can sit down and you don't have to come to the mic. <laughs> That's your reward. For <laughs> OK. Yes. So our other one's already got taken. So this is our best one that was unique. Um, develop forum analytics that permit librarians to engage on relevant issues where their expertise is helpful yeah. among the forum discussions. So that's data and conversation. We've got two. OK. Great. We'll put these two together. So everything that, that remains standing is different. This one goes with that, okay. So we had host, create, encourage local learning communities in, in libraries, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Host, encourage, and create online communities for MOOC. I'll let you say yeah, so have a way for MOOC participants to connect locally with each other and have in-person discussions to enhance what they're doing online. Okay, great. Host in person. I'll take yours. 
And there's another one back here. Uh, the one we still had remaining is uh, understanding your institution's goals. So if you're not doing it yet or you're not immediately planning to do it at your institutional level, understanding what your institution's goals might be and then keeping the ear to the ground uh, so that you can be attuned to developments um, mm -hmm. in that area. Okay. So understand your institution's goals. Okay. So it might be a lonely single or it might go with some of the earlier ones that we talked about. Okay. I don't know why I'm holding a mic because I have a mic on me. So I'm going to give this to you. <laughs> um, another one was to leverage the, the growing trend and adoption of MOOCs to, as an entree to open uh, discussions with faculty about promoting open access of, of their works and their colleagues' works. Okay. Similarity? Okay. I'll take that one. Do you want to do your next one while you're yeah. here? Okay. Since we had several public librarians at our table, you may not be surprised. Forge uh, um, partnerships between public and academic librarians. Yay. <laughs> I cheer for that one. <laughs> Anyone else have that one? Okay. So there were two for that. You still have one? Okay. And the one we have left standing is to proactively anticipate common questions that will be asked of the library by faculty preparing MOOCs. And in doing so, we'd like to prepare uh, one sheets of talking points and facts and make sure they're distributed to all library staff so that they can assist faculty. Yeah, great. Get ready to assist our faculty. Similarities? Okay, so you've, you've got one more. Uh, this was our number two sort of macro, designate somebody who has the management of MOOCs as a priority and has the authority to lead library MOOC efforts, like a head MOOC muck muck. Yeah. <laughs> Love it, that's great, head MOOC muck muck. Same, different, okay, here you go. So we might have gone up a level, so our idea was that we need to uh, libraries as a whole need to reconceptualize our assumptions and core values and how to reach them. And how we got to that statement, which sounds very grandiose, is we got to talking about how interlibrary loan is implemented in the United States and the fact that if all of, if we go back to the idea that who are our students, given that our students are all over, the way interlibrary loan works now might not be the most efficient way to deliver resources to students who are much more... Mm -hmm. So we might need to think about how we've implemented things where we take this assumption everybody's sitting locally and you work locally and we need to think more globally in the way we apply our services. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. No, that's great. That's great. I'm guessing that yours was not exactly that. <laughs> not exactly. Um, ours were much more, I guess, micro and practical. Um, and immediate. So one was to create a moderated listserv for librarians that are currently in institutions that are involved in MOOC platforms uh -huh. to share um, yeah. what we learn. And the other one was to collaborate to create a no-fly list of web content that's likely to be blocked. Nice. Nice. No-fly list. Okay. So I'll take both of those as separate items. And before we um, close this conversation, I want to turn to those that have been joining us uh, via the webcast and tr Twitter stream to see if we can get a sense for whether there's new or similar things going on there. Thank you. Uh, some of these questions, is this on? Hmm. Try again. Some of these Sorry. questions <laughs> um, or comments have already been covered, but just to represent the virtual attendees, I will um, include them. One is determine existing research resources that can be used. What new resources or services can realistically be offered? Another is uh, first, dream, second, deliberate, third, discuss, and four, do. Oh, five, design. <laughs> <laughs> so a little over more than three. Um, determine what partnerships, faculty, public library, other universities, already exist or can be formed for library support. Um, time permitting, build a modest MOOC on Seattle Music with already available online digital collections. 
one more. Um, and consider approaching local public libraries about a study group. Nice. OK, so some similarities and, uh, and some new stuff as well. OK, so it looks to me like we've got some big clusters, some medium clusters, and a, and a nice, diverse set of potential strategic actions. So what OCLC will do with this information is reflect that back to this group and those that participated online. Uh, so we'll put this in a digital format so that it can be shared for everyone. But we invite you, as you leave the room today, to go to the wall and take a look. And uh, if you feel that things maybe need to be moved around and you know, put things together, they're similar, or you know, get them into categories, feel free to do that. If you were at a, a table discussion, and one of the things that you personally feel is really important didn't get prioritized in those top three, you know, the wild card, <laughs> and you want to get it up there on the wall, uh, feel free to do that as well. And um, we will leave it for now at that. Maybe our next conversation can be what we've done with some of these key items. So I'll turn it over to Mary Lee, and uh, she'll give us some closing thoughts. Thank you. Is this, okay, it's on. Um, so first of all, I wanna thank all of you and those who are in the virtual audience for a really great um, set of ideas, reflections. Thank all of our speakers and those who helped to organize the conference for bringing together what I think was really, um, you know, the, the first in a series of, of discussions about um, the relationship between, between MOOCs, online learning, and libraries. Um, we do have a couple of uh, follow-on things. Well, first of all, we'll be summarizing uh, this meeting as we do with all of our meetings on the OCLC research blog, um, hanging together, probably do a series of posts um, that summarize what happened here. We'll be posting um, the slides uh, online and also um, the video recordings that have been uh, going on. So that'll be a nice set of assets that you can um, share back out to the community along with. I think we have an archive of the Twitter stream that one of our um, participants started. So we have some, some deliverables to give back to you. Um, I also know that there is a Google group that has been formed for MOOCs and librarians. Um, I can share that out both on Twitter and um, in a follow-up email for those of you who registered both online and um, in person, I have your email addresses, so we'll be uh, sending that stuff out to you on email. There's a proposal for um, a discussion group at ALA on MOOCs and libraries, and there's a new blog on MOOCs and libraries that just launched over the next, last couple of days that um, w it made its way into the Twitter stream, but I'll fish those things out for you so that you don't have to go um, looking for them. So I think that this was a great start, and I'd like us all to give ourselves a hand in um, getting this thing started. And I'll wish you all a great day. Thanks.